Hello and welcome to this tutorial with me, Rory from Hyper Production. Today I'm here with Sonic Academy to show you Reactor 6 and Blocks. So what are Blocks? This is a new part of Reactor 6 to basically build modular setups similar to that of the Eurorax and you can create yourself completely custom synthesizers and it also helps as a bit of a teaching tool as well to show you the signal paths of how synthesis works and how synthesizers are working in the real world. So it's a real powerful plugin and this blocks feature within React 6 makes it completely easy as well to understand. So before Blocks came about, we just had within Reactor Core and Primary up at the top left here. So obviously when you download and install Reactor Blocks, you're going to be welcomed with another feature here called Reactor Blocks under Library. So then when we click down on that, it gives us all our modules that we have. Since Blocks came out, Native Instruments have been releasing various add-ons for Reactor 6 as well, which you can find on their website to go and purchase. They're highly, highly usable and they are brilliant to sort of work around and mold your sound and create various different bass sounds, pads, leads, whatever you wish. That's the beauty of synthesis. You can create whatever you wish. So I've got a patch up here. I'll just play it for you quickly. So there's just a little patch that I've quickly made up for this tutorial. I will be going on to this in a second of how to actually make this, but I just thought I'd take this moment as an introductory thing to explain a bit about the features and where everything is to point you in the right direction. So when you first open up Reactor Blocks, you're probably best off just starting by clicking on the main home folder. So don't click on the drop down, just click on that. And there is a preset for a new ensemble instrument, Blocks New. So now if we click on that and then click no, it will then give us a fresh palette basically to work with. Now the only feature within this initial preset is the note in. So the rest of it we can delete. So we're just gonna click on those and then delete them. And then you kind of just wanna be left with the note in because obviously we need Reactor to trigger or at least connect our MIDI keyboard to the computer. So we're actually triggering some notes. Then you might have noticed beforehand that I did have sort of an edit window opened up below that. So basically split into two parts. And the way that we're going to open up that is if we click on this little toggle up here, so you can either have it sort of a parallel vertical view or a horizontal view. I like to have it in the horizontal to make the most out of the space on my screen. So we're going to click on that and then it opens up opens up one at the bottom there. Now if you've got sort of two patches that come up like that, or say if you've got it sort of that way, you just simply click on the sort of breadcrumb window at the top left here of each panel, and then you can sort of customize the look of how you want to work. And obviously, like I mentioned, if you want the vertical view as well, you can do it like that. So then the top view is basically our overall view. That is the one where we can sort of change parameters of certain modules within the patch that we'll make using the various blocks. And then the bottom window is actually how we connect everything together with sort of virtual wires, if you like. Similar to how on a Euro rack you'd use patching cables to basically control different oscillators and send signal paths to various different modules as well. Now how we go into adding certain modules is if we click down onto reactor blocks here, like I mentioned, we've got various different additional blocks as well. So the most frequent one that you'll probably actually end up using is this bento box. It's got a whole range of useful tools in there, such as filters, ADSR envelopes, LFOs, and of course, the essential oscillator. So then in that bento box folder, we can just simply choose which modules we want, and we can just sort of drag them into our main windows there. When we drag them into the top windows, they automatically start populating as well into the edit windows below that. Then you can see we can obviously move certain modules around here. And why would you want to do that? Just to make room for any cable connections that you're going to be making, just sort of clears it out and puts it into a nice organized space for you. Then to connect up the wires in between various modules, you simply just click on the name and then drag a virtual wire, which will then connect it. Now we'll be talking about how to basically what connections connect to where, what certain terminologies mean, 
and obviously how to create certain patches. So let me just connect them up like that. And then if you no longer want the cables to connect to certain modules, you just simply click on them, it will highlight there, and you just press backspace, and they simply delete like that. So that is just our quick introductory overview of Reactor 6 and Blocks. Keep watching this course and I'll fill you in on how to create certain patches and also how to add effects and various other bits within Blocks as well. So keep on watching. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please We'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.